Hello, I'm Allison Johnson. For over a decade, I've been writing books and making documentaries on the subject of multiple chemical sensitivity. In the 14 years that have passed since I produced and directed my first documentary titled Multiple Chemical Sensitivity, How Chemical Exposures May Be Affecting Your Health, more and more people have succumbed to this condition. Hardly a day goes by that I do not hear from someone who is close to despair as they see their former life slipping away from them as they struggle with a condition that has been largely ignored by the medical profession. For decades, there was great resistance to the idea that smoking could be a health hazard. Today, there is a similar resistance to the concept that exposure to the ever-increasing number of toxic chemicals in our daily lives could cause health problems. A few years ago, a taxi cab driver from Las Vegas emailed me to say, I was making good money driving a taxi, but I had to resign because the other driver would spray it with air freshener. Eventually, the cab made me so sick I had to quit. In fact, the city of New York has banned the use of air fresheners in all its city cabs. This taxi cab driver from Las Vegas is just one of millions of Americans who are trying desperately to hold on to jobs that are damaging their health and making them sicker with each day that passes. People with MCS can have a wide variety of symptoms as the result of chemical exposures, with different patients having different symptoms. A given patient, however, will usually have the same symptom in response to a given exposure, perhaps getting a headache after exposure to paint or getting arthritic pains after exposure to natural gas. People who develop MCS began to react to low levels of chemicals that never bothered them before. Chemicals that they encounter in everyday life in substances such as paint, perfume, pesticide, cleaning products, gasoline, diesel exhaust, cigarette smoke, new carpets, building materials, and air fresheners. Christine Oliver at Harvard Medical School is the former director of occupational and environmental medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital. Multiple chemical sensitivity, or MCS, is a multi-system disease that is characterized by symptoms associated with exposure to low levels of chemical vapors. These levels of exposure are commonly found in the ambient environment. Systems that are affected by MCS include the respiratory system, the neurologic system, the gastrointestinal system, the skin in some cases. For those with less severe illness and disease, symptoms may include cough, a shortness of breath, a headache in association with exposure to chemicals on an elevator or when they open a magazine and have a scented uh, insert in the magazine. For those who are more severely affected, however, symptoms can be truly disabling. They interfere with a person's ability to engage in gainful employment. They interfere with a person's ability to use public transportation. 
They interfere with a person's ability to live in a multifamily housing unit. They interfere with family life. They are isolating in short so that individuals with MCS who are severely affected often feel very isolated. I see this in patients that I see at the MGH. One of the reasons for their isolation is that physicians do not get this disease. They don't understand this disease. Medical students are not taught about multiple chemical sensitivity. Physicians in training know very little about multiple chemical sensitivity or MCS. Some MCS patients have relatively mild cases. I myself was fortunate to be able to reduce the chemical exposures in my life sufficiently that I could return to normal activities. For many people with MCS, however, the condition can be quite debilitating, even life-threatening in some cases. Unfortunately, MCS can make it almost impossible for people to maintain their social life, to keep working, or even to find a safe place to live. My name is Benny Howard. I'm the acting director of the Office of Disability Policy at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in Washington, D.C. Federal laws, specifically the Fair Housing Act, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, and the Americans with Disability Act prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability. HUD considers multiple chemical sensitivity to be a disability under these laws. Four cataclysmic events have rocked the United States in the last two decades. The 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill, the 1991 Gulf War, the destruction of the World Trade Center in 2001, and Hurricane Katrina in 2005. At first glance, these events might seem to have little in common, but all have left in their wake large numbers of people who are now chronically ill after exposure to large amounts of toxic chemicals. In my 2008 book, Amputated Lives, Coping with Chemical Sensitivity, I write about the devastating effects of these major toxic exposures. Since I've been back from the Gulf War, uh, you know, I also noticed that uh, a lot of things bother me that never bothered me before. Uh, different perfume, different cologne, uh, gas, uh, different smell of even smoke or cigarettes. You know, I just automatically get sick, you know. And sometimes it takes me days or weeks to recover. One day I was on the elevator and someone got on there with some loud perfume. And then all of a sudden uh, it hit me and I got lightheaded. Roy's blood pressure shot up so high that the emergency room staff thought he was having a heart attack. He ended up spending four days in the hospital. You know, the chemical sensitivity is just becoming unreal. And, and you notice it now. It's before when you used to pump gas, you stand there and smell the fumes. You know, great, you know. This is, you know, this stuff don't bother me. Now it's, you know, you gotta try to hide and pump at the same time. In the mid-1990s, I commanded Walter Reed Army Medical Center. Uh, I continued to work on looking for causes for the illnesses suffered by many Gulf War veterans. Illnesses that clearly were more than stress-related. Uh, I looked at vaccines, I looked at exposure to smokes, to other toxic chemicals, petrochemicals and so forth, all that were part of that battlefield experience. Uh, and, and I came to the conclusion uh, that at least one of the explanations was multiple chemical sensitivity, something where a variety of toxic elements, even at low levels by themselves in combination, may in susceptible individuals uh, be causing these illnesses. And, and I believe so much more work needs to be done in that, but it is clearly one of the explanations. So being an iron worker and being a person in the construction field where every day you face some type of hazard or some type of danger, well, right after 
we witnessed that collapse. We knew that we wanted to, uh, to go into the Trade Center site. Meanwhile, everybody else is running from it. And here you got a bunch of guys, your first responders that are looking to go in. We were one of the first units into the South Tower. Last thing I remember seeing actually was a helicopter trying to go to um, one of the towers to get people off the tower. Hearing, you know, someone say it was going to blow and a humongous fireball. It looked like a meteor coming at us. Since 9-11, the smell of gasoline and diesel fuel is such that I don't get out and even fuel my own vehicles. I don't even want it on my hands because of the odor. Being around the job sites and being around the smell of the diesel and the gasoline, I am so symptomatic to that involvement that I was constantly getting problems with my throat. I would wind up going hoarse and I would lose my voice sometimes. The next thing you know, from a sore throat, I'd have a chest infection. I get lung infections, then I get pneumonia. And this never, ever happened to me before in my life. Now the smell of smoke actually sickens me, sometimes giving me headaches. I know I can't use any type of uh, cologne or aftershave I, I can't take that smell. It's sort of like a burning inside my nostrils. I'm very acute. I can't be in restaurants because God forbid someone has perfume on. I can go into a fit. I can feel nauseous and throw up. My throat can close up. The multiple chemical sensitivity issues that have come from 9-11 have not been addressed. Household cleaners, oh my God, you just might as well pack me up at that point and just send me to the hospital. I've been tracking the firefighters um, post 9-11 and what many, many have told me and their medical reports have shown that they become hypersensitive to other chemicals that are out there. They could be fine for a while, they have you know, respiratory problems, they run three-quarter time, meaning that they're not, they're not on active duty, and boom, they'll come across perfume or, or other chemicals out there, even household cleaning chemicals, and they'll just become immobilized. Some of them, and some of them just become so sick that they can't, they basically can't function on, on a daily level. There are those who believe that MCS is psychogenic, that is, that it's all in the mind. Based upon my experience over the past more than 20 years taking care of patients with MCS at the Massachusetts General Hospital, I have no doubt that MCS is a physical and physiologic disease. It is not a psychogenic disease. There are often visible manifestations of disease in patients who come into my office. These include, for example, flushing, of the face, swollen mucous membranes of the nose that are directly associated with exposures, in some cases increased heart rate, in some cases increased blood pressure. When these individuals are not exposed to chemicals, their skin is normal, their blood pressure is normal, and their heart rate is normal. Unfortunately, there is no laboratory test that has an MCS sign on it. You can't take a chest x-ray and diagnose MCS you can't draw a complete blood count and diagnose MCS. And that's one of the difficulties. Hopefully, with research and improved understanding, one day we will be able to do that. But presently, it is not possible. Many people with MCS are so sensitive to fragrances that they virtually become prisoners in their own home, unable to attend church, work, classes, or social gatherings because of the perfume, aftershave, shampoos, detergent, and fabric softeners used by others. To make matters worse, some of those who insist that MCS is just a psychologically based illness state that these people are suffering from agoraphobia or fear of crowds. That's as cruel as saying to a paraplegic in a wheelchair, 
Too bad you don't like to walk. Another striking thing is that many of our patients are much more reactive to strong odors than they were before. Not always with exactly the same kind of reaction that they'll experience when they're exposed to cigarette smoke or bus exhaust, but they notice these odors more and find themselves reacting physically unpleasantly to these odors in ways they never did before. I have patients who cannot walk into a department store cosmetic area without experiencing shortness of breath and chest tightness in ways they never did before. I have patients who cannot get on an elevator where someone is wearing strong perfume or cologne without experiencing fairly intense respiratory reactions. We don't always understand why this is so, but it is ex extremely commonly reported among our World Trade Center responders. And many of our patients say that they're simply unable to wear fragrances themselves or be around others, family members, friends who wear such fragrances because they simply can't tolerate them. The onset of MCS is often in association with a relatively high level chemical exposure. It can occur, however, with lower level chemical exposures. I've seen a number of patients whose disease began during the course of their work in a building or an office with inadequate ven ventilation, with poor indoor air quality. Before she developed MCS at age 32, Jen Duncan had a lot going for her in life. She had excellent and creative jobs. She enjoyed dance and yoga and African drums. I have spoken with many chemically sensitive people during the last three decades, but Jen is definitely the worst case of MCS that I have encountered. She stands as an extreme example of the neurological effects that chemical exposure can induce in certain individuals. I had developed chemical sensitivity prior to 9-11. Um, the office building where I worked was doing renovations and after prolonged exposure over several weeks in a poorly ventilated area to a number of those chemicals, uh, I had a number of strange symptoms and uh, unusual things that were going on that then later on um, we realized was developed into multiple chemical sensitivity and other chemical injury symptoms. After 9-11 with all the exposure of the smoke and the fumes blowing over from Manhattan into Brooklyn, I definitely experienced exacerbation and got even more debilitated. And, you know, being exposed just to um, cologne or um, if I was out around traffic or somebody smoking a cigarette, that it would make me uh, disintegrate and have the disorientation and the trouble breathing and the great pain, joint pain. Spelling is hard. So Numbers are hard. I get, I have dyslexia sometimes now. Like I, I, I always check and double check. I, I, I would write an envelope and it would be returned because I mix up numbers. I never had a problem with numbers before, you know, I did calculus and differential equations. And if somebody asks me numbers or to spell something, it's really hard. Sometimes it helps me. I know I knew a little sign language before, so I, I usually s s spell out just to help me get something physical to get the numbers or letters out. Sorry, I'm getting fatigued, so I'm trying to just ride the waves and <laughs> hold my energy together to get through. Believe it or not, that was Jen on one of her good days. We had also filmed her the day after a doctor's appointment. Jen told us that exposure to several air fresheners and diesel fumes in the private medical transport that had taken her to this appointment had caused this temporary but sharp decline in her condition. In June of 2009, the CDC put on its internal website an indoor air environmental quality policy intended to 
maintain good indoor air quality in buildings in which its employees worked. So among other things, the CDC policy states scented or fragranced products are prohibited at all times in all interior space owned, rented, or leased by the CDC. And this includes the use of the following products, incense, candles, or reed diffusers, fragrance emitting devices of any kind, wall mounted devices similar to fragrance emitting devices that operate automatically or by pushing a button to dispense deodorizers or disinfectants, potpourri, plug-in or spray air fresheners, urinal or toilet blocks, other fragrance deodorizer, reodorizer products. In addition, the CDC encourages employees to be as fragrance free as possible when they arrive in the workplace. The policy states fragrance is not appropriate for a professional work environment and the use of some products with fragrance may be detrimental to the health of workers with the following diseases, chemical sensitivities, allergies, asthma, and chronic headaches and migraines. It is important to note that the EPA website lists air fresheners as a source of indoor air pollution. The CDC indoor air quality policy is a very important policy and provides an example of what we should be doing in every workplace in this country. I think all workplaces should be fragrance free. The number of people who are chemically sensitive and or with diagnosed MCS is increasing on a daily basis. Hello, my name is Ann Steinemann. I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering and a professor of public affairs at the University of Washington. I received my PhD in civil and environmental engineering from Stanford University. I conducted two national prevalence studies of multiple chemical sensitivity in the United States together with my colleague Professor Stanley Caress. What we found was that 3.2 percent of the population in the United States have been medically diagnosed with multiple chemical sensitivity. This suggests that nearly 10 million people in the U.S. have MCS and this is equivalent to the population of the state of Michigan. People with multiple chemical sensitivity serve as the canaries in the mine that alert all of us to the danger of exposure to toxic chemicals in our daily lives. Efforts to accommodate these people may well help improve the health of all of us and help reduce rapidly escalating health costs that our society faces. In my two national epidemiological studies that I conducted with Professor Stanley Caress, I found that nearly a fifth of the U.S. population suffer headaches, breathing difficulties and other health problems when exposed to air fresheners and deodorizers. And over 33% of asthmatics also suffer breathing difficulties, headaches and health problems when exposed to air fresheners and deodorizers. A fragrance-free policy allows those individuals who are chemically sensitive to continue their employment. As a result, they do not have to turn to Social Security disability for income. Those who are not the beneficiaries of a fragrance-free policy are often unable to work and do find themselves on social security disability. It makes sense for employers to follow the CDC lead and establish fragrance-free workplaces so that as many people as possible who suffer from multiple chemical sensitivity can remain productive members of the workforce. Otherwise, they are faced with a choice between living on the streets or trying to obtain social security disability income or supplemental income, which is barely enough to live upon. Keeping people in the workplace so they don't have to obtain public assistance to stay alive is a good policy for everyone, and it's particularly important as our country struggles to keep government costs under control. I got interested in this topic of hazardous chemicals in fragrance products because I've received more than 2,000 emails and telephone calls and letters from people telling me that they became sick when they were exposed to everyday fragrance products, products such as air fresheners, deodorizers, hand sanitizers, lotions, shampoos, laundry detergents, dryer sheets, and cleaning products and the range of health effects they reported were dramatic 
from headaches, seizures, breathing difficulties, asthma attacks, rashes, even loss of consciousness. So for my study, I analyzed 25 best-selling fragrance products. Products in the categories of air freshers and deodorizers, laundry products, cleaning supplies, and personal care products. Now what I found was dramatic. These products emitted more than 420 volatile organic compounds. Now a VOC can be thought of as like a fume. It's a chemical that's volatile. These products each emitted an average of about 17 volatile organic compounds. Now of these 420 compounds that collectively these products emitted, nearly half of them are classified as toxic or hazardous under federal laws. And for some of these chemicals, there are no safe exposure levels. Another startling finding is that of these more than 420 chemicals, fewer than 1% were listed on any label or any material safety data sheet. In closing, I have a special request for those of you who are fortunate enough not to have developed multiple chemical sensitivity. Your efforts to treat those with MCS with kindness and compassion instead of skepticism will do much to make their difficult lives more tolerable.